Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and I have no jokes for you today. With the passing of my aunt, I just didn't feel like it was appropriate. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released called Classified France 44, a turn-based tactical World War II simulated-based game, developed by Absolutely Games and published by Team 17, released not in early access and selling for $35. So then, what is this game really? Well, to put it simply, you are in command of an elite troop of paratroopers who dropped behind enemy lines in World War II in preparation for D-Day. If you don't know what D-Day is, it's the day the USA invaded France to liberate it from Nazi-held Germany. A big beach battle. I'm sure y'all have seen Saving Private Ryan, right? Well, remember that beach scene? Yeah, that was D-Day. Anyway, your job is to form partisan groups of locals to fight the occupiers and disrupt and sabotage their efforts in an overreaching goal of trying to support the invasion. And that's the gist of the story. Now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, shall we? So, first up, also as always, is the positives. And the first positive that really hit me was the music. So, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the general sound quality, obviously. And we're going to start with the music. It's almost perfect. If it's not perfect, then someone show me perfect, because this music is amazing. In the stealth portions, in the combat portions, and especially that song at the title screen. I mean, isn't that just beautiful to listen to? Feel free to scroll back and listen to it again. Hope I don't get copyright struck. Anyway, next up is the sound effects themselves. The gun sounds awesome, the ambiance sounds great, and just overall the sound quality in everything is everything that you would hope it would be. They even have voice acting, though it's... well... okay, it's not awful. It's passable, I suppose. Like, it's not cringy or obviously fake, but at the same time, the voice actors don't sound real. The accents sound real, don't get me wrong, but the tone of voice, the dedication, the realistic way they're speaking and approaching the situation all sounds a bit underwhelming. But at least they got voice acting, so, you know, keeping that in the positives. Next up on the positives is the look and feel of the game. Now, I'm sure you can tell by looking that, you know, these aren't the best graphics ever, ever, but they aren't bad either. A lot of attention to detail and good contrast with fairly decent graphical design overall. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. For a game like this, I kind of expected this level of detail and graphical design, so it's in the positives because it looks as good as you'd expect it to. The next positive point that I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about here is the gameplay. The gameplay is intense. It's got a little bit of everything, but nothing too convoluted that it ruins other factors of its gameplay. Let's start off simple and slow. The gameplay is very similar to that of XCOM. You have a grid-based mini-level with half-based cover, full cover, yada yada. You have action points or AP to move, shoot, and utilize skills or abilities. The difference between this game and XCOM is that in this game you have a set amount of AP, and with that set amount you can either move or shoot. Every block they move consumes AP, and you need at least six to fire a gun. So where XCOM gave you basically two different colors of movement grid, letting you know how far you can run, and then how far you can run and still shoot, this game does not do that, so you'll need to learn to manage that little factor yourself. But otherwise, it's all still very much the same. Even the grenades throwing that, still pretty much the same. Much like XCOM 2, there is a sneaking mechanic here, but they are divvied up into three different mission types. You have assault missions where you go in loud, already detected, and start fighting right off the bat. You have ambush missions where you start off hidden, and then after making four assassinations or sneak attacks, you get a big uh, ambush bonus, and you get to go loud, with bonuses to your accuracy and your dodging ability and stuff like that. And then stealth missions where you can sneak and assassinate to your heart's content, never needing to go loud unless you're discovered. So, pick your poison. The sneaking is actually fairly decent. It's easy to understand and to learn and to manage and to play, which is good because normally I hate sneaking stuff like this, but here it didn't repel me, so that was a good sign. You also have a base camp where you can customize your troops, customize their weapons, which by the way, you can get different class weapons, uh, like colors, like blue rifle, green rifle, orange rifle, and so on, each with higher rarity, thus making them more valuable and powerful. So, you know, like how RPGs do it. They also have skill trees, and every time they gain a level, each of your soldiers can then level up, with you picking which direction you want them to go in in these skill trees. You can even customize what they're wearing, but to my knowledge, it doesn't really affect their defenses or any other stats. Then, you've got the overmap, where you pick your missions. If you accomplish three objectives in three separated segments, sorry, one objective for each of the three separated segments of a larger territory, then, so, so three objective missions altogether, then you get a big bonus from that territory, a permanent one, as you officially permanently established a presence in that area. So, you can research, look around, and fight to secure the bonus is perfect for you, the player, and give yourself a unique experience in your playthrough. Hope that wasn't too confusing. 
Last but not least is the tutorial and the stability. The tutorial was done in a way I approve of. It teaches you how to play the game while actually letting you do it and see it to learn it, you know, hands on. And it does it in line with its story, so you're also progressing and learning not just about the game and its controls, but also about the people you're controlling and the world around you. Also, it was short and to the point making it that much easier to just dive right into the game. As for the stability, for me at least, the game never crashed, never froze, never dropped frames, never did anything buggy or glitchy at all. It was nice and smooth. It did have a little bit of an issue where they're telling them to reload and they kind of like their body glitches out a little bit, or when you're telling them to assassinate somebody and there's a little bit like maybe a lag or their body's twisting away it's not supposed to. It's kind of a very minor thing that I only noticed a couple times, maybe with just one patch they could make it look more realistic or something, but it wasn't really that big of a deal, which is why I didn't want to make mention of it. But I still did, because I want to be honest. Alright, so that's all the pros I got for the game, now we gotta go on to the bad, but before that, listen to this. My YouTube channel only gets noticed and gets more popular and more views if it is already popular and already has lots of views. Kinda messed up, right? So I'm humbly asking you people out there who were kind enough to check out my video to consider supporting the growth of my channel. A like, a subscribe, and a comment go a long way to help, and they don't cost you anything, but if you really like my content and really want to support it, then share my channel online, share my videos, and spread the word. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, also, I have a nice bit of a surprise later in this video, and it's worth it. Some awesome information, so make sure you keep watching to learn what it is. It's going to be sprinkled in there randomly. I'm going to keep you here. Now then, onto the negatives, and the first negative is the user interface. I hate it. I think it's ugly. I think it's needlessly confusing, and I think it's just overall awkward to use. Some buttons don't make sense. I mean, you're using WASD and the mouse to do most of your commands. Most of the shortcuts are, are around WASD, and the mouse does what it does. It guides, and it connects, and it, you know, guides. And um, so then you've got this weird thing they decided to do where two key commands for battle is the enter button and the backspace button. Completely on their own, not near anything. So now every time I need to do this or that, I have to look down at the keyboard, move my hands from their set position to hit one of these buttons once. Then I gotta go set back up into my original positioning of my hands because all of the other shortcuts are in their normal places. Not to mention the skill tree, I hate it. I think the idea is great, but the design and layout is annoying and ugly. It's got a lot of symbols, a lot of text, a lot going around left and right, and overall it's just not nice to look at. Then you've got the camera control. For the most part it's okay, I guess. A little awkward, but I absolutely hate the fact that every time I zoom in, the game then wants to force me out of the zoom in and zoom me all the way back out whenever anything happens. It's really frustrating, so my camera just keeps going in and out, in and out. It's really frustrating because I just want to zoom in and get, you know, just really get into the action and stuff, but it just keeps happening and it, it gets so frustrating that I just stop trying. So I'm just watching everything from this far away distance where I can barely make out the specifics. Also, I don't like the Overwatch ability here, it's different. Rather than just having it be broad scale to shoot at any moving enemy in sight, it's set to a specific place or direction. Doesn't really make much sense to me. A normal soldier would shoot at any enemy charging at them from the left, not just keep looking forward and hoping that he went that way. I'm gonna take a pause here to give you that little surprise I mentioned earlier. Right now on Steam, there's a sale and XCOM and XCOM 2 are selling for $3 each. For $6, you can purchase both games, and I would highly recommend you do so. They are amazing games. I bring them up because they are similar to this game. Play the first one, because the second one literally is a sequel to the first one. So, go do that. I just saved you bucket loads of money if you were ever interested in playing those games. Okay, now then. The next negative point I have here is the price. I would not say this game is as good as the first XCOM, and that game is only $30. You know, after the sale is done. Now don't get me wrong, this game is almost there. I think $35 is a bit too much, maybe $30 at most, maybe between $25 and $30. The production value just isn't as big or impressive as the XCOM games, but they're charging more than the first one did. I just don't agree with that price tag at all. And last but not least for the negatives is the speed. Now in some ways the game does help with that by making a fast forward button whenever it's the enemy's turn, but despite that, the game still ends up feeling and moving too damn slow for my taste. At least in XCOM everything moved at a decent pace and when it was slightly slower, there were like cutscenes or flashing lights or really beautiful stuff to look at and stuff to just keep you you know, entertained, but here, everything just moves so slow, your team going through doors or windows, it's like a, they're crawling, the reloading is slow, the running is slow, sneaking even more so, everything, just literally everything is so damn slow. And the only thing you could speed up is the enemy patrol time, but come on, speed it up, man! 
And that's all I got for the negatives. Not a whole lot, to be honest, and I love World War II games, so obviously I was drawn to this one immediately after I spotted it. For my overall thoughts, I think that despite its flaws, the game is still pretty good. I mean, those flaws aren't even all that bad. They just take getting used to. I really enjoyed myself and was really getting into it. I think it's a damn fine game, and if you're a big XCOM fan like me and looking to scratch that itch, then this is a really good game for you to check out. Besides going back and replaying the XCOM, XCOM games, of course. I love the different weapons in this game, the different people, the different classes, the maps, the overreaching goal and having an effect on it. I love the music and the sounds. The gameplay is a bit slow and a bit awkward, but it's still fun and engaging. So yes, if you are interested in this game even a little bit, I would re definitely recommend you give it a try. All right, everybody. All right, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching with a special thanks to those who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all, Farewell. I've got a target! The guy from my Neflankan!